Hello and welcome back to another edition of Telescope Man. What I want to do today is uh, kind of take you through some PSK31 uh, running on the Flex right now, the Flex 3000, and uh, doing a little screen recording at the same time. I hope this comes out okay. We'll find out. Anyway, uh, what you're looking at here is uh, what we call one of the digital modes in amateur radio. And specifically, it's uh, PSK31. And you can see those signals right here. There's multiple signals there. I'm going to turn the uh, sound back on. I've got it muted right now, and I want you to hear what PSK31 sounds like. So here we go. Okay, let's shut that down. <clears throat> Uh, of course, when you're uh, actually doing PSK31, you can uh, uh, turn the sound down. I like to leave it on just a little bit so I can hear it, because a lot of times you can hear new signals coming in. Uh, they make a unique kind of sound when it first starts up. So a lot of times I can, I can hear a new signals coming in, and I'll look at the uh, decoder which I'll show you in a little bit to see what that new signal happens to be. But you can certainly turn the sound down so it's not a, a big bother. <clears throat> and we're actually going to leave it off while we're doing this. So on the flex, a little bit different than some other types of radios, but not a whole lot. Uh, flex doesn't need any additional hardware to do uh, digital decoding. Uh, it's got its own sound cards built in, and it uh, basically uh, does not need anything like a rig blaster or a signal link or something like that, uh, or a sound card basically is what that is, uh, what they are, in order to decode uh, P, uh, the digital signals, including PSK31 and JT65, which we're going to talk about today. Well, you're going to have to download some software with this. So we're looking at this uh, Flex running on the screen here. I'm going to send it down to the bottom. And I'm going to open up a little software package called FL Digi. FL Digi. And that's this little software package right here. Uh, right here. And you can download that for free. And the, uh, I believe the latest version is what I've got is 3.21.78. I believe that's the latest version. And uh, well, what is it telling me? Your color scheme changed. Well, yes, it did. Uh, all right, so here we go. We're going to open up FL Digi. And as you can see on the screen, uh, it's decoding those signals that you heard right over here. There's a waterfall down at the bottom that you can actually see the signals. Now, if they're very, very weak, they're eh, like this looks like a signal right here, but it's so weak, it's just barely receiving it right now. Uh, but certainly, these signals uh, that you see with uh, hard lines. Uh, you can decode those, and they're being decoded right here. Now, what's neat about this software is uh, uh, you don't need much power to run it. <clears throat> I usually uh, run somewhere between 30 and 40 watts is all I run. If you run too much power through it, you're going to splatter the signal, and you're going to interfere with these other people that are trying to transmit. So be careful about that. Also, uh, you really don't want to use any ALC or uh, AGC uh, when you're running this. So uh, what I'll do in the flex, let me open that back up, is I will set the AGC to fast 
You could actually even turn it off. I, <clears throat> I, th I believe you'll get more signals if you'll turn it off, but I like to leave it on it. What it does, and I can show you that. Here it is on fast. You can see there's a little background noise there. All right. Now you can adjust that, of course, with uh, the receive and transmit gain. But if you put it on fixed, which is no AGC, uh, let me show you what that looks like. And uh, you can see it kind of cleaned up some of that noise. So uh, I usually run it, sometimes I run it on fast AGC, but most of the time I'll run it on, on basically no AGC, none whatsoever. So <clears throat> here you go with a bunch of signals. Let me get the viewer back up, the little browser. now. A lot of times you'll open this software up and uh, this won't be here. It'll be like this. And you'll see this screen and you'll see these and you'll click on them and it'll start decoding up here and you're wondering what these other signals are. <laughs> well, if you go up here to where it says View and click Signal Browser, you'll get this other box that decodes multiple signals all at the same time, okay? Now, if you want to talk to any of these people, here's a guy calling CQ right here. If you click him, it sends you over to his signal right there. You see how it did that? If I click this person, it sent me right here. All right, so if you want to talk to one of these people or answer a CQ, you click their signal you type in their call sign. This person is KA2RQR. So I'll type in KA2RQR right up in this box up here. Now later I can put his name right here. Well what that does for you, you can click the answer button right here and it will transmit this call sign that you've got in the call box up here automatically so you don't have to transmit it. <clears throat> now one of the secrets to using this program is to set up uh, what we call macros. And you can change them, you can have multiple sets of macros, you know, and load up one. So let me load you up mine. I've got some saved. So if you go to File Macros, I'm going to click Open. And there's my macro right there that I normally use. And I've just loaded it. So down here you got some buttons. And you can add more buttons. And you can put what you know different things on the name of the button and that kind of thing. But we're not going to get that complicated today. Let's right click a button. So, uh, whoops, I don't want to transmit right now. Uh, <clears throat> let's right click a button. And you can see what a macro looks like. You can see I'm calling CQ, CQ, CQ. DE means from. And my call means my call, W1, X, W, X. And then I say CQ from W1XWX in Texas and PSEK, which means I'm looking for some other stations to answer me back. So, whenever I click this button, it's going to transmit CQ for me automatically. I don't have to type it. Likewise, uh, let me show you what the answer looks like. Once I've typed this person's uh, call sign in that I want to answer, I can just simply click this answer button and it's going to stick in his call sign, uh, DE from uh, W1XWX, and I'm waiting for you to answer me back that K. Uh, so <clears throat> by using these macros, you don't have to uh, come down here in this row and start, you know, typing things that you might want to say 
and then clicking this transmit button. You can do that, but boy, that's a lot of work uh, unnecessarily. Uh, now, sometimes what I do is I combine a typed in something along with one of the macros. So here's how you do that. So let's say this fellow's name uh, when he transmits to me is Phil. All right, so I'm going to immediately type in Phil up here, right up here, so that the macros will capture his name because I've got name in some of the macros and that way it'll put his name into the message. So I've got his name up here, but I might type in something like, Hello, Phil. How are you doing? Uh, or something. I come down right below it, and then I go and get a macro that I want, which is my QSO one. I'll show you what that looks like. It's quite quite a lengthy, lengthy test, you know, bunch of text. So once I click this button, once I'm down here below this one line that I've typed in manually, and I click this QSO button, it's going to transmit, Hello, Phil, how are you doing? And then it's going to transmit his call sign and my call sign and give him my name and tell him his signal is 599 and thanks for calling. And my name is Joe. I usually put that in twice just in case the transmission uh, doesn't quite go through, so it gives it a better chance. Uh, for him to receive it. Give him my grid number, Hunt County, Texas. Kind of tell him what radio I'm using. You know, and I'm using 40 watts. And then I little BTU, back to you. And uh, his call, his name, my call sign, and in the transmission. And... <clears throat> So that's how you work with these macros. And of course, you can type in anything here you want. And you would click Apply the first time you did it. Now, don't get fooled. Just because you said Apply, the next time you open this program up, you're going to be back to the de default uh, little buttons. Unless you save it. So... <laughs> After you've uh, done your little macros and clicked apply, you got to go up here and click File, Macros, Save. And that's actually what captures them, uh, all your typing that you just did. So the next time you open the program, the first thing you need to do is go up here and File, Macros, and open the macro file that you saved. All right? I went about a week trying to figure out why it wouldn't save any of my macros, you know, after I hit apply. Then I'd come back the next day and I'd be back like it was when I first got the software. I wasn't smart enough to go up here and actually save the macro. So don't forget to do that. Anyway, this is PSK31, a very neat uh Probably the most popular digital mode would be PSK31. That's just my opinion. Lots of people on here all the time. Uh, at certain times, you'll get DX. Here's one. Looks like it's coming in right here. An OK, OK1PAA. OK Got to look him up, see where he's from. Anyway, that's PSK31. Let's shut this down. And again, let you hear the signal in the background. There it is. We'll, we'll mute that. Now, if you look right over here on my pan adapter, this is what's neat about the flex. You can actually see the signals. This is some CW down here. This is a guy transmitting CW. You can see what it looks like. Right over here, real close to uh, 14.070, that's where the PSK guys uh, kind of hang out on 20, meter, 20 meters. But at 14.076, 
is where the uh, JT65 people hang out. So I scooted us over there, and uh, I'm waiting. Uh, the transmissions just went away. This is a really quirky mode. You transmit for about 45 seconds. Then there's a 15-second break, and then you get a message back. There it goes again. So let's, uh, let's listen to this, and I'll kind of uh, show you how it works. Let's listen to these signals. Okay, kind of sounds like uh, music. Kind of sounds like music. And again, there's multiple signals there. Well, basically, JT65 was originally uh, developed to do uh, moon bounce communications. Uh, long distance. <clears throat> and, you know, they definitely use a lot of power usually when they're bouncing signals off the moon. But they were using this software to do that. And uh, basically, a bunch of hams uh, kind of manipulated the software a little bit. And now they use it for a kind of a quirky way to do uh, communications, digital communications. So let me open up JT65HF. HF. So we'll open up that software. It's free. Just like that FL Digi is free, uh, you can download JT65HF. Again, you get a uh, kind of a waterfall. Uh, the signals look different. You can see they're all tones and kind of in a line. Uh, it's very kind of difficult sometimes to tell where one signal ends and another begins. But if you're going to transmit, you need to find you a hole. <laughs> somewhere and if you click it you'll go there you can see I went over here and then I can transmit without kind of bothering these other people that are already on there most of the time I just answer CQ because there's always some people calling CQ what's neat about this mode it's very a, a very low power mode uh, 20 watts is considered to be high power now, remember, it's a key down for 45 seconds. So, you know, if you're going to transmit at 60 or 70 or 80 watts, uh, you run the risk of burning out your finals in your radio. So try to stick around, uh, you know, below 25 watts. Uh, don't get much over that. Uh, anyway, here's some signals that just got decoded. And uh, the signals in green are people that are calling CQ. And uh, the signals in gray are people answering other people. And if it was in red, it would mean they're answering you. So, of course, you'd have to transmit first to get that red little line, <coughs> little uh, highlight. Anyway, let's kind of read this. So this is a very short message, uh, 13 characters. You can type in your own message right here. It has to be no more than 13 characters. Or you can just simply use these buttons. You really don't have to do any macros at all. Just use these buttons. You'll call CQ. All right. Then you'll answer the caller. And then finally, you'll send a Roger, 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 or a 73 at the end of the message, okay? And if you're answering uh, someone that's calling CQ, well, you're going to answer the CQ here, all right? Again, it's similar to FL Digi. You would click the signal first, and you can see that, uh, whoop, let me make sure I'm not transmitting. And I was. Uh, turn that off. 
and <laughs> I don't want to transmit. So I just basically shut down the flex for a minute while I'm describing this. Uh, anyway, uh, what you want to do is uh, you click this message and it automatically puts that person's call sign in there. It puts your call sign in there and it gives that person your uh, grid location. EM12 is my grid location. And then if they hear you and want to talk to you, they're going to answer you back with a message that gives you your signal report. And if you look right down here, you can see the program is already telling me what OM3CUP signal report is. It's a minus 12 dB. Minus 12 dB. That's how they're reported. Uh, <clears throat> so the machine, the software does that for you automatically automatically uh, tells you what the signal report for that person was. It's minus 12. So when you get the message back in red, he's going to give you a signal report. And then, of course, you'll send uh, either Roger. Usually I send Roger, Roger, Roger. And the person calling CQ sends 73. Takes three minutes to do that. Remember, you transmit for 45 seconds. There's a 15 second pause. And then the person responds back to you for another 45 seconds. So you can drink your coffee while you're doing this. Uh, it's kind of a great mode <laughs> early in the morning when you're sleepy because it doesn't go very fast. But I have made some great contacts, very long distances, for example, to the Ukraine on 18 watts. So, uh, <clears throat> kind of a neat mode. Uh, if you don't have a tower and you don't have a good antenna set up, you know, it's marginal, you might be able to make some really long distance contacts at certain times uh, using J. T65 JT65 So <clears throat> again both of these software packages are uh, free Now if you don't have a flex you're going to have to step out there and get yourself a signal link or a rig blaster which are two little hardware devices that permits you to plug the radio that you have into your computer. So, <clears throat> uh, they're not real expensive. You can usually find a rig blaster. Sometimes they show up on QTH used for, you know, 69 bucks or something like that. You can buy yourself a uh, rig blaster or a signal link. Uh, other than that, uh, you can plug it, plug and play, uh, do a little adjusting on your sound card to make sure you're not over modulating and be sure to turn off the AGC and uh, don't use it. You'll be just fine. And so these are two of dozens of digital modes that are available in amateur radio. I stick around JT65 and PSK31. Got quite a few contacts on both of those modes. So with that said, let's jump back up here to the flex screen. And there, and I shut it down because I didn't want, uh, want to be transmitting. And there we go, there's our signals. JT65 right here and right over here next to it is PSK31 PSK31 so with that said I wish you clear skies like I always do and 73 and remember to keep looking up to see the greatest show on earth right over your head every single night and now I gotta figure out how to shut off this recording <laughs>